Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to talk about how I make enamel pins and lots of tips for you if you're looking to make your first enamel pins and what I recommend when you're making them. So I've made a lot of enamel pins in the past and I'd like to say I have a bit of experience making them and some tips I've learned on the way. So the first thing I want to talk about is basically what are enamel pins? They're a metal design filled with colored enamel. So basically the company will take your artwork, they'll make a metal mold of the outlines of your artwork, and then each area in the mold gets filled with a different enamel color, like a coloring book kind of. Also, there's two types of enamel pins. There's hard enamel and soft enamel. Hard enamel has a smooth finish. The enamel is pretty much flush with the metal outlined. It's usually more expensive than soft enamel, but more durable and has a clean finish. Soft enamel pins have the metal part raised above the enamel, creating sort of a pooling effect where the enamel sits below the metal lines and the metal lines appear raised. It has a lot more textured appearance and is cheaper to make. I think hard enamel pins and soft enamel pins both have their place. Um, it kind of depends on your budget and how you want your final pin to look. I personally make hard enamel pins for all my designs, but I have toyed with the idea of trying soft enamel pins. I've seen some cool ones that utilize the effect in a really cool way if you want like certain areas of the lines to really pop out. Um, the soft enamel can also give it a nice like soft effect like it looks more like friendly and like I don't really know how to describe it but it, it looks like it's like actually like soft and like it's a more subtle appearance and I think it can work well depending on your design so you can't actually make enamel pins in your house you need to find a manufacturer I think it's a good idea to sort of pick your manufacturer before you design your pins that way you know what options you have to work with because different manufacturers will have different types of things that they can do but usually they can all kind of do the same thing but I want to share with you the manufacturer that I've used for all my enamel pins in the past all the way from my very first pin my backpack frog pin all the other pins i've made and my most recent pin my backpack fox pin which is now available on my store my latest shop update included some products from this video sponsor which is gsjj they're also called custompins.ca or enamelpins.com i've used this manufacturer like since i started making enamel pins and they actually reached out to me to see if i wanted to do a video for them and get some products from them and make a sponsored video. So I thought, hey, this is the perfect time to talk about how I make my pins because this is how I make my pins. Like I use this company all the time. So I thought it was perfect. I'm gonna talk a bit about my manufacturer. They're called GSJJ, that's their main website. They have other websites that specialize in like other types of products, like their custompins.ca is a Canadian pin website. They have enamelpins.com. They also have a custom sticker website where you can make stickers. What I like about this company is that it's factory direct pricing. When I first started making enamel pins, I heard about them from a friend. I've used them ever since. I've always been really happy with the quality of the pins. They have really good communication and fast delivery and free delivery, which is really good. All the products they make include patches, like embroidered patches, lanyards, buttons, PVC patches, silicone wristbands, metals, ornaments. They've been making enamel pins for over 20 years. They have competitive pricing and fast free shipping. Also, something I really like about this company is they have a free quote tool. So you can go to their website and click on like free fast quote and you put in all the specifications of your pins you choose like the metal type number of colors the pin size um, if you want glitter or not what kind of backing what kind of packaging and you get a quote and you can actually choose how fast you want your pins and the slower speed you choose the cheaper the price so if you give them more time to make your pins you get a cheaper price. If you want them faster, you can select the faster option and pay a little bit more. I like how they have that like flexible pricing model. I think that's really good. There's no minimum order quantity. This refers to the number of pins that you order, but there is a minimum order value of $99. So if you only order one pin, it's gonna cost $99. So it's a lot better to get a lot more pins. And the more pins you order, the cheaper each pin is. And there's also a mold charge. This is the metal mold that they make for your pins. And this is what they use to create your batch of pins. So there's a mold charge plus a unit price per pin. Um, you can revise your artwork as many times as you want before they go into final production. So you actually can communicate back and forth, make changes, stuff like that. They also do glitter enamel, glow in the dark, pearlescent enamel that looks pretty cool. They can put rhinestones on it they, and they have transparent enamel and this looks cool as well. I haven't tried that yet. They also have different backing textures. I didn't realize you could do this. Honestly, I thought there was just a default. 
As you can see, I'm just like unboxing some of the pins and patches that they sent me. They also make embroidery patches and I think my patches turned out great and I'm really excited that my enamel pin manufacturer also makes beautiful patches. Um, by the way, these three new products are in my shop now. I just had a big shop update. Thank you so much for all your orders. It took me quite a while to get them packed. There's still lots of stuff left and I added some more stickers and like lots of new listings on my shop you can go check out. And if you want to get a patch or stickers, they actually come with the cheapest shipping option if that's all you want to get. Just thought you'd want to know that. So thanks so much to GSJJ for reaching out to me and wanting to sponsor my video. And I'm just really excited to talk more about how I make my enamel pin. So let's keep going with that. So we already talked about hard and soft enamel pins. You also have to choose your enamel pin backing. The most popular options are the military clutches, which are just like your standard metal backings. There's also rubber clutches. I think I prefer the rubber clutch since the pins tend to sit flatter and not fall off as easily, but I've also heard some people say the military clutches are the most secure, so I think it's a personal preference thing. Um, and also larger pins can have two clutches for added security. If you're making a huge pin, I assume you can add like three. Um, but that seems a little excessive, but if you have a huge pin, why not? Another type of backing you can get for pins are the pin locking backs, which are the most secure. They're a little bit difficult to remove as well, and they're more expensive. I think they're like 50 cents to add them on. And like I said, there's other effects you can do with your pins, like glitter, glow in the dark, clear enamel, rhinestones, pearlescent. There's also different metal colors. The metal color is the outlines of your artwork. I like to use black nickel for readability. It's the darkest, but still shiny and looks nice. Um, Cause sometimes it's hard to use the mid-tone metals that are more like gold or like rose gold. Um, Cause if you have colors that are similar to that, it can be difficult to read the pin. So I just usually go with black nickel, but I do like experimenting with other metals sometimes. The other metal options are gold, silver, copper, rose gold. You can even get rainbow metal, which I really want to try one day. So now for the process for making your pin. First of all, you want to make your design. You need your artwork. And before you do this, you probably want to choose the size of pin that you're going to make. The bigger the pin, the more expensive. The Fox pin that I made recently is a 1.5 inches. It's the biggest pin I've made and it's beautiful. Um, most of my other pins are 1 inch and some are 1.25 inches. I tend to stick around the 1 to 1.5 inch range. Some artists make even bigger pins, but they can get quite expensive. The bigger you get, you have to sell them for more. Then you choose the metal color. This is useful when you're actually designing your pin because you can sort of approximate the metal color while you're designing it digitally. If you don't really want a specific color, you can just leave your outlines as black and play around with it later. And thirdly, this is really important to make sure each separate color is surrounded with a line, a fully enclosed line, like a coloring book kind of. The line work represents the metal part of the pin and each color needs to be separated by metal, otherwise the enamel colors will mix together. The manufacturer will have requirements for how thin the lines can be and how close together two separate lines can be. So you can't have extremely tiny details and areas of color that are too narrow. Um, so try to keep it a little bit more simple when you're designing pins. Don't make things too detailed and tiny. I find that's like a general good rule of thumb to have. If you have finer details that you just really want to include and you don't want to separate them by metal, you can do screen printing on the pin. And I was a little bit nervous to try this, but I did try it for this Fox pin and it worked out wonderfully. I'm really glad that I did it. Basically, it adds a layer of enamel on top of the pin to indicate finer details. And this doesn't need to be outlined by metal because it's sort of like they like slap it on top of the pin when it's done um, or they like screen print it on top of the pin when it's done. Um, I think it adds a lot of like, it, it, it can really give you a lot more options for the design of the pin and how you want it to look, but it's going to increase the cost per pin like any extra thing you do. It's going to make the pin more expensive to make, but I think it can be worth it. Also, try to use as little colors as possible to get the cheapest price. The more colors you add, the higher the price. Um, GSJJ has four colors or less for free, then an additional eight cents if you want five colors, 16 cents for six colors, and 24 cents if you want to have seven colors or more. This is a price per pin. So if you're making 100 pins, that's 24 extra dollars total for seven plus colors. That just sort of gives you an idea. 
Um, if you want to go all out, you can do the seven plus colors, but if you want to be a little more conservative, you can do four or less colors. I think enamel pins can be really effective with a very limited color palette. I don't think you need tons of colors, but if you want to make a really high-end fancy pin, you can totally opt for that. It's also a good idea to match the colors in your pin to Pantone colors. If you don't know what Pantone is, it's basically like this universal color swatch sort of system. And this is important because all screens display colors differently, but if you have a Pantone color, it's best to have them in real life so you can look at them, but it's kind of expensive. I just sort of look at it on different screens and make sure I kind of have a good estimate of what I want the colors to be. But Make sure you match it to Pantone colors because that way your manufacturer will know what exact color you want because their monitor might display colors differently. Um, also, not every like RGB color exists as a Pantone color. Pantones aren't on that like huge spectrum. There are some gaps, so you want to find um, your closest matching Pantone color if you want the exact match and if you want like really accurate colors with your pin. Um, sometimes I don't even supply them with Pantone colors though. I'll just see what they match it with and if it looks good I send it on its way but if I want some specific colors I will supply Pantone colors up front or if there's one color I need to change I'll say hey can you change it to this Pantone color instead of the color you have and they go no problem and send me another proof. So make sure you are aware also like if you don't have Pantone swatches in person your pins might look a little bit different than your screen just make sure that if they end up a little lighter or a little darker your design will still look okay because it's really hard to get things perfect you kind of have to accept the fact it's not going to look exactly the way you want but once you get the pin it might look even better than you wanted or it might not really matter ordering is very easy usually depends on the manufacturer you use but for mine you just go in and do the, the quote option, upload your artwork, and they'll get back to you pretty quickly with a mock-up. And you can kind of zoom in, make sure all the details are right, make sure the colors are in the right places, make sure you double check everything before you approve. And then you've made your enamel pins. And a lot of people also like to get packaging. With GSJJ, you can order backing cards along with your pins and put your logo on them, and they'll come that way. Um, but I like to I like to get my own made separately. Um, that's just what I prefer to do. I order all my backing cards from Vistaprint. I get square mat business cards, and I usually get 250 at a time because it's a better deal per card. It ends up being pretty cheap to get backing cards. Now I want to offer some general tips and things to expect when making enamel pins. One thing I noticed, if you have a really light color and it's a large area, like say a white pin, it's gonna be really easy to notice imperfections in the white color. I made these um, Star Kitty pins and they came in a white version and a black version and these pins had a lot of defects. Um, it's actually pretty standard to get a percentage of imperfect pins with your order. Not all of them are gonna look like pristine, that's why people like to go through their pins and sort out the the really good quality ones and the slightly like you know scratched, scuffed, imperfect ones and sell them for different prices each. But I noticed with my Star Kitty pins, they had a large area of flat metal and a large area of like white. And I noticed on the large area of metal, you can notice scratches a lot more easily because it's like this large shiny surface with one imperfection. It's more noticeable than like a detailed pin with lots of lines and on the white enamel it's really easy to see any slight dust or imperfection or like color that got on it that shouldn't be um that's something to look out for if you're doing like light colors or a lot of metal in a design um you might have more defects because they're just a lot more noticeable than a more like detailed pin but not not too detailed i'm just i'm comparing it with my frog enamel pin that one um barely had like any def defects at all um, defects can include like bubbles in the metal, bubbles in the enamel, scratches on the enamel, um, overfilled or underfilled areas, areas in the enamel that are filled the wrong color. Um, these kinds of things can happen. It's kind of just expected with enamel pins that like, I don't know, like 10% of them are going to not be 100% perfect, but they're still going to look good. So those are all my tips for making enamel pins. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments and my community is pretty good about answering other people's questions. So someone will probably get to it before I do, but if not, I'll try my best to answer all the questions about enamel.
enamel pins. And make sure you check the link in my description to gsjj.com or custompins.ca. That's where I get my pins made and I can honestly stand by them. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you now have a better idea on how to make enamel pins and I'll see you in my next video.